when you write with somebody like um, Alice Cooper or John Bon Jovi, are you writing for their character? I, w- I would say when you bring up, when you work with, um, let's say, a band like Bon Jovi, mm-hmm. you know, the band, you know, has a kind of a mission and also a uh, personality unto itself. You know, and of course, you know, Bon Jovi is, you know, the name, the reason the band's called Bon Jovi is because, you know, Bon Jovi, John Bon Jovi's the leader of it. Right. And, um, yes, you know, he, we, it's, it's a fine line between somebody telling the, you know, the true story of their life in a song and also what their character and archetype calls for. You know, it's the reason, you know, that people like them. So it's, it's a, it's a blending when it comes to something like that. With Alice Cooper, it's more, it's, it's a little bit different and Meatloaf also. Um, those are true theatrical characters. You know, Alice Cooper, his real name is Vincent Fournier. Right. And, um, Meatloaf, his name is Michael, uh, Ade. And, um, he, you know, they created, uh, both of them started out the same. Alice Cooper was the name of his band, and then everybody started calling him Alice Cooper. Right, right. And the same thing was for Meatloaf. Yeah. His, his, uh, his band was called Meatloaf. And then people call it, started calling him Meatloaf. Right. You know, it worked with his image because he was heavy set. Right, exactly. Yeah. And so it, it kind of, um, evoked a kind of, uh, and his personality, both their personalities are so over the top. Right. And so their music, you know, really worked theatrically. I mean, that's, um, Meatloaf met Jim Steinman, uh, cause Jim was playing, um, in the, he was a musical director for the cast of Hair, I think. Mm. And then they made friends and then after hours they started working on these songs and Meatloaf, uh, sang Jim's songs so perfectly and they made, you know, a recording, and that was the start of Bad Out of Hell 1. Wow, yeah. So, you know, I, you know, just to plug myself, I I produced Bad Out of Hell 3. Mm -hmm. So I know a lot about Meatloaf and a lot about Jim Steinman, Mm -hmm. who's, by the way, going to be honored this year at the Songwriters Hall of Fame. Good for him. Yeah, that's good news. He's certainly done a lot of great things. Uh Uh-huh, and so, yes, you know, um, it depends on to the degree that a person's persona or character is a kind of creation as opposed to a reflection of their, you know, true life. And so usually, you know, singer-songwriters like Laura Nero, Joni Mitchell, they, they were not writing for characters. Mm-hmm. They, were, they were actually expressing their personal feelings in the in the music that's why they rarely if ever co-wrote right that's right you know yeah. they, these their songs were diaries they're they're confessionals right so yeah. for a professional songwriter you know you have a choice write songs and then hope somebody who doesn't write songs sings them and you know that they who they are connects with it so convincingly that um you know it's their interpretation that's the, it's the art of interpretation. Or, um, you, and, and the way I've made my, you know, I've never been that lucky, uh, pitching songs from the outside. Huh. I, you know, that's one of the reasons why I became a producer for so long. Oh. Because it was easier to have the artist's, um, trust and, and attention and be able to play them songs you know, that they perhaps didn't write and, and see if you could get them to, to sing them. Oh, really? But for the, for, but starting in 1979, I co-wrote I Was Made For Loving You with yeah. Paul Stanley of Kiss. Yeah. And this is a band that didn't do, you know, that much um, outside writing. Right. But, uh, you know, <clears throat> Paul did, you know, Paul and Gene wrote songs together and they, you know, on, then on their own they wrote songs and then they put those songs together and th- that, that would be Kiss. And so Paul, you know, um, asked me to co-write a song with him and, you know, that song turned out, um, 
to be a ginormous hit and to this day still earns a lot of income. Yeah. Uh, performance wise and, and also in, in, within the compilations of Kiss's greatest hits. Um, and it's used, it's used often in, in, uh, commercials and movies and things like that. So, um, that kind of opened the door to a kind of career that, that in songwriting that had not existed before. Huh. Bands usually, um, co-wrote amongst themselves. And it was usually the lead singer and the lead guitar player, let's say. Right. And then um, perhaps they'd allow a producer to jump in and work with them on a song, and they'd give that producer a songwriting credit. But it was not something that uh, bringing in an outside professional songwriter was not um, was not uh, something that bands thought was credible. Right. Or, you know, a right. cool thing to do because right. then they were, they were afraid that the bands would perceive that they couldn't write their own songs. Oh, Somehow yes. the, uh, producer jumping in was permissible, uh -huh. but not an outside songwriter. <laughs> and so when, when, uh, I did that with Kiss, um, it, 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 it kind of opened the door for other bands, you know, to try it. Right. So the first next band that I worked with was, Bon Jovi, and the very first day we got together, we wrote You Give Love a Bad Name. And then a few weeks later, we wrote Living on a Prayer. So, you know, it was a magical collaboration, and there was instant chemistry between us.